Hello, I'm Dr. Stephen Andrew Missick. I want to continue talking about UFOs. And I think at this point, it's obvious that this is a genuine phenomenon. This isn't uh, fraud. It isn't crazy people. Uh, that there are actually UFOs. What are they? You know, maybe the government doesn't know completely. Uh, but they probably have a general idea. And, you know, Tucker Carlson said something uh, recently in an interview he did that I thought was very important about the phenomenon of UFOs. So before we get there, I want to mention uh, Donald Trump Jr. talking to his father, uh, Trump Sr., right? And uh, Donald J. Trump. So he says, uh, why don't you, could you release to us the complete files on, on what happened in, in Roswell in 1947? And then Trump's like, oh, I don't know. I got to think about. It. I got to really think about that. I don't know if I should do that or not. He he was non-committal. The fact of the matter, this is seventy-five years ago. Think about how technologically advanced. If this was just a kite, like they like us to believe, or a weather balloon, there'd be no reason not to release that information. Uh, and Tucker said two things uh, that I think are important. Before I get there, I also want to mention. When you have disclosure, I think that I think the probably reason why they're resisting to doing full disclosure, because it's all or nothing, right? I think that they should, to begin with, especially if it's apparently it's true that a UFO crash landed in Roswell, and there are there there are people, legitimate sources saying that there were organics or human or not. I guess these are alien remains, biological remains, and maybe perhaps not at that site, even though I think it's pretty definite at this point that a craft, now it wasn't a kite, it wasn't a sheet of aluminum foil and balsa wood and scotch tape, that a high technologically advanced vehicle crashed at Roswell, New Mexico in 1947. It's like, well, what are these things? Uh, could it be a, one of our foreign adversaries like China or Russia, Russia beat us to, the, to this level of technology? Most likely not. It could be a spiritual phenomenon or trans-dimensional. Uh, trans, um, uh, where this could be demonic activity or perhaps angelic activity. It's like, well, what do they need UFOs for? I don't know. This is something going on. I'm just saying that it's a very real possibility that this is spiritual or interdimensional in origin. And, of course, the most likely explanation of this is that these are uh, advanced uh, alien life forms from somewhere else in the, the galaxy or universe. So uh, let's go back to what Tucker Carlson said that I thought was kind of profound. And people say, well, we don't want to. They're, they're afraid of a, a panic or mass hysteria. And then Tucker says, well, give me a break. The government lives off of panic and mass hysteria. That's what they want. They want to keep people in a constant state of fear and panic. And, uh, I mean, if UFOs help them do that, they would do it. And I think another thing the government wants to do is destroy people's faith in Christ specifically, but in religion in general. And I think if, if UFOs would were able to do that, the left would certainly be pushing UFOs. Uh, because that's there's there seems to be our elites are obsessed with destroying Christianity, in particular religion in general. Uh, so what is the motivation? They want mass hysteria. They try they try to create mass hysteria with COVID. And like, you know, Acacia Cortez, Alexandria Acacia Cortez, she comes out as a politician, as a leading Democrat. What does she say? We're all going to die. We're going to be in a Mad Max movie in 12 years. And of course, you know, they've been saying this from, you know, the end of the world is, is near. The left, the Democrat, and the so-called scientific community have been saying this since the 1970s. We're all going to die. We only have uh, 15 to, to 20 or 30 years before we're in a Mad Max movie. That's what they say all the time. So they are trying to keep people in a constant state of fear. So this cover-up of UFOs is not about a mass panic. And I know that Louis Ellis Mondo, whatever his name is, he says, well, it's Christian people. I don't think that's the issue either. Uh, so what is it? What is what is going on? And, and Tucker says, think about it. Okay, so it seems... Especially when I saw, I was at Roswell and I saw the public, uh, the public affairs office issued a press, press statement, a uh, press release, right after the, this UFO was recovered, saying that's what happened. And then within 24 hours, they changed their story. And, uh, you know, I work in the military. I've been familiar with the public affairs office, the PAO. And uh, if that's the initial press release, these are very serious people. 
um, they must have recovered a UFO. Uh, and of course, then they, they go into cover up mode. Um, so what, what Tucker is saying is like, think about, think about this. Think about for 75 years, maybe a little longer. I think there's reports that several months or, or maybe a year or two before uh, Roswell, there were other crashes and recoveries. And we also need to remember during World War II, you had the phenomenon of the Foo Fighters. And people look at the, at the book of Ezekiel, chapter 1, and they see Ezekiel's vision. They say, well, this sounds like he's seeing a UFO and these angelic, so-called angelic beings he's seeing are, are aliens. Well, maybe it is related to the phenomenon. But, of course, this was uh, God speaking to Ezekiel. But, I mean, I, I guess if you're looking at that and you weren't a believer in, in, in God, as I believe everybody should believe in God and, and in Jesus Christ, but if you're looking at that, this, well, this sounds, it does sound like a description of a UFO phenomenon. Does it not? Even though I don't think that's what, what was going on. But like I said earlier, how do we know how the spiritual world relates with our material world? Maybe these crafts or devices are, are used from, from going to this one dimension, because that's what it would be anyway, right, to, to, to another um, so Tucker Carlson says, think about, think about the, the time and resources and, and money that they have spent in keeping the public in the dark, uh, ridiculing people who are telling the truth, uh, trying to discredit people who are honest about these things. I know, I know there's a lot of kooks in the, the UFO, uh, community, but you know what? The, the the government apparently knows there's something to it, and they're trying to make the people look at kooks. That doesn't mean there aren't kooks out there. And, you know, I'm, I'm skeptical, but I have to say, <laughs> when uh, back in the 90s, they were releasing these reports on uh, on Roswell, and actually, even though, you know, I'm, I'm not one inclined, at that time, I wasn't one inclined to believe in UFOs, uh, the more that they tried to release, the more I was convinced that something really did happen. Oh, these aliens, uh, bodies, oh, no, no, that's crash test, uh, test dummies. When I look at the report, I actually went through it. And uh, what came to mind is that famous statement in, in, uh, in Shakespeare, surely thou dost protest too much. So when, when the Air Force is putting all this stuff out, trying to uh, discredit the, uh, the Roswell story, it's like making me think that, well, maybe there's something to it, even though at that time I didn't believe uh, in UFOs, actually, it's like my, and, and this is still my my attitude towards the supernatural. I think that you know, say somebody claims they have ESP or you know saw spiritual ghosts or whatever spiritual phenomena UFOs. I say that like, you know, eighty percent of those things are probably just fraud. Ten uh, percent it could has a logical explanation, some natural phenomenon, but then who knows? Ten percent of all these cases could be something that, that's unexplainable. So I'm not trying to, even then, I'm not trying to rule out the possibility of this. I'm just trying to, I think we should be very, uh, very skeptical about it. But at this point, with what's going on in Congress, it's obvious that something's going on. So what, what Tucker says is he says, you know what's, probably the reason why they're trying to cover this up so desperately is because they have committed some criminal acts or perhaps they have, acted against the good of mankind and they're trying to protect themselves. Are they exploiting these devices for technology and, and getting wealth out of it? Or uh, perhaps have they entered into some kind of a secret agreement with these beings that, that created these, these devices? Uh, I mean, if they have recovered bodies, and sometimes I think, of, I think about these... Uh, why don't they recover their technology, right? And, and this is something to think about. You know, advancements in technology does not necessarily bring about virtue, right? If that was the case, I, I was watching, I haven't watched Oppenheimer because uh, it seems to be, you know, a puff piece on this guy and uh, it's kind of an apology for communism and things like that. It's, it's got a... Uh, the Oppenheimer movie's got a, a an agenda, a left wing agenda. Uh, but um, I understand. This, this is me. I, I know a lot of people don't agree with me. I, you know, I understand the need for us to develop the atomic bomb, especially before the Nazis or, or the, the communists. And there, there's a scene where Truman says that the Russians would never have an atomic bomb. And had the people, had the liberals and the leftists not leaked the, all the information to them, they probably wouldn't have gotten it for a long, long time, perhaps never. But we have traitors, left-wing traitors in our own government. 
Uh, but you have to question the morality. There's the necessity of developing that technology, but the morality of using it to level an entire city, killing every man, woman, and ch child in that. That we actually, United States of America, which is supposed to you know, represent you know, virtue and honor and freedom and liberty and decency. That's what America should be about, you know, these ideals. Uh, you know, I understand people say, well, we need it in the war. This is, uh, you know, we actually saved a lot of lives, uh, American and Japanese, by doing that. But I just have a problem with it, honestly. You, you know, I understand the need for developing that kind of weapon, but using it in a civilian area. Uh, and they say, well, more people died firebombing Tokyo. Well, maybe we shouldn't have been firebombing Tokyo like that. Look, the Japanese, that was the Japanese Empire, was an evil empire. They attacked us. The war was just in fighting and defeating the Japanese and liberating people from Japanese rule. But I just think that when we implement war, we should have moral boundaries that we shouldn't cross. You know, we should have just war, and just wars have to be executed. With just, I know that there's collateral damage and stuff like that. You can't help it. But we should not be the bad guys, right? Not do uh, evil to such a uh, an extent. So the question is, you know, if these, like I said, these UFO, they could be a totally demonic phenomenon. These could be demonic entities doing this. Or some people say maybe these are like the, the Nephilim. These are some kind of hybrid creatures that are not, you know, there are some... Uh, perversion of, of, of life. We don't know. But I'm just saying we should enter, entertain the possibility that you know, maybe these beings are evil. And uh, like I said, I don't understand what would we do? I, I, you know, as human beings, could we have a higher standard of morality than these so-called space aliens, if that's what they are? And think about that. We've, we've played with the idea in, uh, well, look at like the Independence Day movies or even Star Trek. You know, you have the the Klingon Empire, the Romulan Empire. Uh, this brings a lot of questions, right? I wonder if there's like galactic law and galactic law enforcement. What if these things are the equivalent of of pirates? But one of the things I'm, I think that there are these these aliens, if that's what they are, that are are doing that is uh, unethical and immoral. If they left, or why would you leave uh, your people? Their, their, their bodies crashed. Shouldn't you recover the vehicle and recover those people that died uh, just to leave their dead abandoned on a, you know, a planet? Something else to think about, if this is going on, these are spacecraft, there must be a space base or a mothership hidden somewhere in our solar system. Uh, so they're probably watching us. They know where to hide. But I think that's a very real possibility that there's a, they have some kind of a space base or a mothership in our solar system. Because you think about the vastness of space, and uh, you know the, the closest the closest star system to our solar system, if we were able to travel near the speed of light, it would take eight years to get there. Now, it's likely that these aliens, because they're they're ships that we see, they defy the laws of physics, so they probably solved the problem, uh, bringing down. <laughs> Uh, the time or dealing with time and, and uh, interstellar space travel. I think it's pretty obvious that they've uh, found a way to reduce, you know, so it's not years. Uh, some kind of like we see in movies, uh, warp drive. You know, we have this theoretical concept of warp drive. Maybe these, these alien intelligences have been able to achieve it. So why would they leave their dead abandoned on a planet uh, and not retrieve the bodies? You know, perhaps these uh, these organics are like a in their culture they could be clones, right? Maybe for some reason they they need to have organic uh, beings instead of an artificial mechanical intelligence crafting these vehicles. Uh, we don't know. Like I said, maybe these are space pirates. I mean, they could take over our planet, but it seems to me maybe they couldn't. Maybe it's too difficult. Maybe they they'd have to uh, invest a lot of resources to. To do that, um, and like I said, maybe people in our in our government know what's going on. I think it's very interesting that UFOs congregate around where uh, military bases, but in particular, they're very interested in, in uh, nuclear facilities. And perhaps that represents. Uh, I mean, we haven't fully tapped in to everything we can do uh, with nuclear, but they're whoever these things are, whatever these things are, they're very very interested in that. A lot of sightings are seen, and notice 
notice the big uptick we had in UFOs was right after the detonation of, you know, of, of atomic weapons, you know, tested here in the United States, but also uh, what we used in, in the conflict and against Japan. So once that happened, we're starting to see many uh, UFO sightings. Um, so I'm just saying that, you know, <laughs> my point here is that uh, you look at humanity, right? You just look through history and We've had people of great virtue, like the morals that are taught by Jesus Christ. And there's been, you know, what I was saying is you had the, the movie, the, the Day the Earth Stood Still. And that was produced right after, uh, you know, after soon after we detonated those atomic weapons. And what's the idea of that movie is that there are other intelligent life in this galaxy. And they were displeased. They're looking on mankind as too materialistic. And it's like if they continue to advance, they could be a, a, a threat to... Uh, I guess other cultures and civilizations in our in our galaxy, um, and they did a remake with Keanu Reeves. But the idea is like, okay, mankind represents a threat. Maybe we should destroy the civilization. And that's like, uh, it seems like an advanced. You'd, you'd hope, right? But like I said, advancement in technology does not necessarily mean an advancement in virtue. Maybe these aliens are evil. Maybe they don't have the share of a moral code which we we have. Even our failures, um, people believe. I mean, we have an inborn idea of fairness and justice, and, and all the cultures around the world, for the most part, believe in uh, a moral structure and virtue. Uh, but like I said, if you look through human civilization, yeah, we see atrocities and, and they're, you know the, the sad failures of men, but we've, people have accomplished a lot, too, uh, in philosophy and literature and art and music. And it's like, <laughs> could... Could an, would an advanced civilization destroy everything that human, humanity, that mankind has achieved? Uh, you, you'd hope that, that they wouldn't, that they would preserve our, you know, I guess we, we, we see our failures, but you want to, you think that, you think an advanced civilization would appreciate art and culture. You'd hope. Maybe they, maybe these beings don't. Um, but sometimes you, you kind of wonder, what if they are satanic? And, uh, I'm not a big fan of Alex Jones, but he was talking about how these people, uh, you know, want to bring, you know, we're, we're over five, what, eight billion people on, on Earth. Population growth is is starting to slow down and, and probably has peaked and will start, you know, going into a decline. And that's happening in a lot of places around the world. Um, but they, these these leftists want to bring the, the total global population down just to half a billion, uh, 500 million people. Could you imagine? That's that's a genocide. It's 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 evil, but who knows? Maybe these maybe these uh, beings have bad designs towards us, uh, and maybe or maybe they are satanic, and uh, maybe these people are in league with the devil or in league with these aliens uh, to the detriment of mankind. So what should mankind do in the face of what could be a potential threat? And uh, I, I think what we should do is we need to try to... It, I was watching just about the... Uh, maybe I should just go ahead and watch the Oppenheimer thing. But it's like, you know, we had this need, right? The need to, uh, you know, to build an atomic weapon, to protect ourselves, to protect mankind from the Nazis or the communists. Right, so what do they do? Let's bring together. This is a secret project. Let's bring together, you know, the greatest minds to do this. Uh, so, I mean, if we have a recovered UFO, I think, and and our entire species and our entire planet is facing a potential threat, then they need to have the the the, the collective resources of all mankind to catch up technologically, so that we can protect our defend and defend ourselves. I mean, what are these, what are their, uh, are, are their interests in this planet benign? They could already be exploiting us or, or taking things away from us and, and we wouldn't know. And, you know, I, I think that, I think that uh, Tucker Carlson's insight is very valid. And uh, I think he's got a very strong point that, uh, and, you know, the, the other thing I was thinking about is it, kind of amazing um, that, you know, of course, people, some people talk. But let's just talk about what happened in Huffman here, you know, close to New Caney and 
in Kingwood back in the, in the mid eighties where this woman, uh, she was going down a country road and she came across UFOs as a, a large UFO. It was a, a diamond shape shooting flames out of it, escorted by at least a dozen, uh, military schnooks, which is a, uh, the double propeller helicopter flying around. And the government said, well, that, that, that didn't happen, uh, which it did. Uh, and then she, she had, uh, uh, burns and, and radiation poisoning and, and uh, she suffered, she recovered to a certain extent, but she died younger than she should have probably because of adverse health effects to being exposed to this, uh, UAP or UFO. Uh, so this woman, the, the government just let her, left her out to die. Uh, and that's not right to do that to an American citizen and an innocent woman. Uh, that's wrong. Uh, but also, you have to think about the other thing that's going on. It's like, if, if that young man, I mean, he's a, he's a boy at that time, but he's still alive, that her son, I mean, if these helicopters were there, and I know people who witnessed some of these events. It just wasn't them that saw Other people saw something was going on with bright lights and helicopters flying around. So, <laughs> schnooks are, that's military aircraft, Army and Air Force, right? And it, it's, it's amazing that you have probably over the decades from 1970, sorry, 1947 till today, uh, you've probably had thousands or tens of thousands of, of military surface, service personnel who know that UFOs are genuine, and yet uh, very, very few of them have actually spoken about it. Um, and in conclusion, like, uh, was it 2014, I think, when you had, was the Nimitz, you had these, these pilots, even though the, the footage they released is garbage, it's smudgy, grainy footage, it was the, the flight data recorder uh, footage that was filmed. Yes, it's black and white, it's grainy, it's very fuzzy, but it's genuine. And then the pilot, and these aren't dummies, these aren't people, I mean, they, they, they test these people. These are the best, the best Navy pilots. Uh, and he testifies that he saw these, the, the TikTok UFOs, they're the size of a school bus, but they're like a giant TikTok. They're uh, silver and uh, cylindrical, but they're able to move it at incredible rates of speed, speed up, stop, and then, you know, take right angles. Uh, they're, they're performing in a way that we, we have no, uh, you know, a, a jet, it would kill the person, liquefy someone moving at that rate of speed and changing directions that quickly, and it would uh, cause the, the vehicle, if it's something made by us, to, to shatter into pieces. So, and, and I really doubt, I mean, the reality is, is that the United States, places in Europe and Japan are the leaders in technology and innovation. I respect Russian culture and, you know, they've had some important scientific advances. They, they actually led this space race for some time. But the fact of the matter is, is that Japan, sorry, Japan is a big technologically advanced country. Russia is not. Russia is not on par with the United States technologically or Japan. Um, they're behind technologically. They're not a leader. I mean, it's an important, powerful country, but they're not a leader in, in, in technology and innovation. They're behind. As I mean, Like I said, I'm not insulting or, or uh, belittling the Russian people in any way. I'm just talking about objective reality. So, uh, you know, it, could the United States of America make a, that kind of leap into uh, advanced technology or Japan or maybe Germany? Uh, yes, but China? No. Russia? Probably not. Uh so what are these things? Um, they, you know, and then Matt Gates, they went to the Air Force Base. We want to see this photograph. You can't see it. What do you mean? We're Congress. We have, we have civilian control, supposedly, of the military in this country. Well, we can't. Finally, they'll let us see it. And, and Matt Gates said, um, that craft is not of this, this earth. It's not Chinese. It's not Russian. It's otherworldly. And uh, the American public needs to know what's going on. But like I said, the problem is they can't just uh, do a partial disclosure. Once they, uh, plus the whole cover-up, which is immoral in the first place, will be exposed. I don't understand. I think, that, I think the public affairs office was right uh, to release that information to the public as soon as they, they recovered a crashed UFO. So now we have, you know, this turmoil and problems and, controversy going on for 75 years it's like how will how will mankind 
you know, adjust or cope or <laughs> deal with, you know, the, the reality of, of, you know, alien life and you know, encountering a, a superior civilization from uh, another solar system. How will we respond to that? Will be the how will people process that? Well, if they released the da the data uh, seventy five years ago, it would be, you know, an old story. <laughs> we would have you know uh, dealt with it and adjusted. But now they're they're causing more problems by by prolonging the torment. But uh, uh, I think I think that uh, Tucker is correct to say that this is not about. Preventing a, a mass panic. This is about the control of information to the detriment of planet Earth and all mankind. And uh, I think that they're obligated to release to us the facts of what's going on. And imagine, imagine our military working against the interest of the American people and subverting our constitutional system to withhold information, probably for unethical and immoral purposes to benefit people, and probably to hurt us, uh, is an outrage. And of course, for some reason, it looks like the, the CIA has been involved in this from the beginning. And uh, of course, I hate on the FBI all the time. You know, I think FBI, the FBI needs to be abolished. It's the greatest threat. It's the greatest threat to our constitutional system that we've ever seen. At this point, the FBI is far more dangerous than uh, Islamic terrorist organizations. They're evil, uh, and we have to abolish the FBI to save our republic. Every FBI agent should be apprehended and uh, jailed. It's a criminal organization. Uh, but the same goes for the CIA. and The CIA, which apparently assassinated uh, JFK. And I'm, not, I'm not a fan of the Kennedys or JFK. But it looks like that's, you know, and like I said a few years ago, it's like, no, there's no way that would happen. But now it it it, it did happen. <laughs> and once you accept it, it, you know, like I said, it makes more sense to say that our government assassinated uh, John F. Kennedy. It, it kind of answers a lot of questions. It makes it more, makes more sense. Uh, right? Like, uh, I mean, like the way Ruby died. Just, just the whole thing. I, I don't see how somebody like uh, Oswald, and I believe he, he pulled the trigger. But there's other people involved in that. And there's probably another uh, gun that was that was fired. But how could you let this guy just go back and forth to Russia, the United States, and just let this in, in the the midst just soon after the, the Cuban Missile Crisis? This guy's a communist sympathizer going back and forth from the United States to America. No, there's something there's something going on there, and uh, it comes down to the teaching of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ said, "You shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free." And uh, we, need to, we need to have the truth. We shouldn't be afraid of the truth, and we have to accept the truth. Uh, but then we also have to... We, it's sad. Could you imagine that, you know, all this so-called democracy is just smoke and mirrors. There's actually powerful interests that control things. They want to have a, you know, a veneer of a Republican system, an illusion of democracy, uh, while certain people hold a absolute power and hold facts that people are... Uh, have the right to know, they withhold them from them to their detriment. And perhaps they're in some kind of league with these. And like I said, maybe these aliens aren't good, right? Technologically advanced does not need, mean, uh, uh, it doesn't instill necessarily virtue. It's just a fact. Uh, I mean, look at, you know, once the Russians got the atomic bomb, did that make them more virtuous? I mean, look at the internet and things we have. I mean, we still have the wickedness of man. You know, use a phone to to learn and develop your mind, but you can, you know, people look at pornography and perversions on their phones too. Uh, they exploit people through their phone. Uh, so just because you have great, greater technology, advanced technology, it doesn't necessarily instill virtue. So these, maybe these aliens do have a sinister design. And I think that we should be looking for out for our species and to protect our species. So, and uh, they're not doing that right now. So hopefully we'll get more information out and we need to, we need congressmen and, and senators to push for full disclosure about the phenomenon of UAP. What does the government know? And uh, when they know it, why was this withheld? And uh, perhaps we need to start criminally prosecuting people uh, because they're working in the, to the detriment of mankind, especially at this point. Uh, we need the facts. We need the truth. And we have to demand them from our government and hold these people accountable uh, for what they're doing to us. So I'll probably have more UFO videos in the future. So thank you and God bless.